What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be kind of a different video. A um, little bit of a story of heartbreak, <laughs> if you will, for me at least. Um, like really cool encounter, but also a heartbreaking one uh, for me. So last week, as you all know, um, I was in Utah elk hunting. Um, really just a special place not really expecting to have an opportunity at a mega giant elk just it's a place that has a lot of bulls fun to hunt you know um and so i'm going to set the scene a little bit then we're going to let you watch what unfolds and then we'll kind of talk about it afterwards but um first day i get there um i'd heard of a bull that was living in this area that they had kind of saw in the summer kind of knew was around, had this big triple beam, non-typical looking elk. Um, but there's so many elk in this area of Utah, the chances of having that one in front of you at bow range, in bow range is probably not likely, you know, especially since I'm not a giantly picky elk hunter normally. Um, uh, you know, a 300 plus bull comes screaming in my face and he's old, I'm probably gonna shoot him, that kind of thing, in most cases. so. Um, anyway, it was the first day. We hadn't really got into elk yet. We can hear some faint bugles. Um, and honestly, probably wasn't prepared for this opportunity. Um, I was just kind of figuring, you know, like it's going to be like most elk hunts where we grind it out for a few days, get on some bulls, and then we have our opportunity at a pretty good bull. You know, and that's my fault. I should have been ready for this opportunity. I should have been more prepared as we all should at all times. So anyway, we're hiking down, we hike way around to try to get the wind right to hunt back up this ridge where we're here in a couple bugles. And as we get to the top of the Aspens, it's pretty quiet. And then we hear this bugle that sounds like it's probably 250, 300 yards away off over a ridge. Sounds like it's in the next canyon. So we were like, well, let's set up and start calling, um, do a call and see if we can get him to come up this ridge. And I, the plan was me, Mike and Justin, who Mike and Justin were running camera for me. Um, we were gonna move up about 30 yards, get where we can shoot this ridge really good, get, in a good, get some good cover and set up. And then Austin was gonna start calling. Uh, but what happened was we get about 10 yards into this 30 yard move and he comes over the ridge, like he just appears walking right at us in the Aspens. We're stuck with no cover. We're stuck. I have one little tree on my left hip. Mike and Justin are in the wide open and we're just standing here stuck. And there's nothing between us for us to move to get cover. He's 70 yards away coming. Um, and like we're just stuck and, and it's him. It's a giant, one of the biggest elk I've ever seen. Um, and he's walking right at us. And, and I go into straight panic mode there's so many decisions i'm having to make in a in a tiny amount of time and um i'll let you guys watch it and see what happens uh and then we'll talk about it afterwards <laughs> Yeah, so that was really heartbreaking. I, I didn't say a whole lot. I, I think I said, dang it. Um, but inside, I, I knew I'd probably never see that bull again, and I didn't. Um, and he, I was hoping that he would stop when he took off. We just weren't prepared for that. You know, weren't prepared for that moment. Um, 
and hindsight 2020, I wish I wouldn't have tried to draw. So when, as you could see, when he gets closer, like I'm waiting, hoping that he's going to turn and, and go up the ridge at any point once he broke 60, um, he's dead. If he just turns and goes up the ridge like most of the elk were doing um, from what we could understand. But no, he just kept coming right at us, right at us, right at us. Um, and like eventually I was like, well, if he gets, once he broke 30 yards, it's when you see me slightly raise my bow up to get it in position, um, holding it in front of my face. And then he sees us and then I made the choice to try to draw. And like, I know just from being a deer hunter or anything, elk hunting, I've killed like 15, 16 bulls. Like if once they break a certain distance, you don't get away with anything. You don't get away with drawing your bow, so you need to be drawn. And I was hoping before that, I didn't want to draw because he was facing me at 50 yards, unless he turned and gave me a shot. I was hoping he'd go behind a tree, anything that would allow me to get drawn. So now looking back, I really wish I would have just froze, not moved, let him bust us, thinking he sees something because he would have probably hopped out there and stopped and maybe gave me a shot. Now, maybe not. If he would have done that, if I would have not tried to draw and he would have spooked and ran off, I would have wished I would have tried to draw, you know? So obviously you never know what, what would have worked and what wouldn't. I know what didn't work. And that was trying to draw on him at 25 yards walking at me. I try to draw really slow, but a big mature bull like that just, just doesn't let you get away with it. Heartbreaking. Just a giant elk, um, never saw him again. We looked for four days. I ended up shooting a great bull. Um, and we'll show you that whole story later in a full episode. You'll get to see all of this. But in the meantime, I wanted you guys to see a pretty heartbreaking uh, encounter with one of the biggest elk of my life. Maybe, maybe it would have been my biggest bull. I don't know, you know, but um, I'll probably never know because he ran out of my life that day and I... Don't think I'll ever see him again, but hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave in the comments what you think I should have done. Uh, you can call me an idiot. That's fine. Um, I've been bow hunting a long time, and I still make plenty of mistakes. So tell me what you would have done in that situation. Y'all have a great day.